Hello, I'm Donald McCauley from BJGP. Today I'm talking to Richard Horton, who's the editor of The Lancet, but in particular, he's an expert in global health. And the context is that Donald Trump has cut off funding to the World Health Organization. Richard, tell me, what do you think this impact will be on primary care worldwide? Well, thanks ever so much for asking me about this. And I think just bef before I answer your question, I do want to really make it clear that WHO, at least in my view, has done the most incredible job in responding to this global pandemic. Um, and I'm sure that there'll be all kinds of issues that can be looked at uh, afterwards, but in its initial response, it did really, really well. Now, in terms of the impact on primary care, um, I'm very concerned, actually. WHO has been the champion of universal health coverage, and we all know that you can't get universal health coverage without having the most effective primary health care system that you can devise. And this pandemic, and now the attack on WHO, is going to set countries back decades, I think. And that's a real, real worry. Um, we're going to see health systems under huge pressure, and we're going to see the principal advocate of primary health care now yet again um, put into a corner. So I think this is a very troubling time. And we need to do all we can to defend WHO. And we need to make sure that the momentum around universal health coverage isn't lost despite this pandemic. For our very sophisticated primary health care system, the influence of the WHO isn't that great. Could you tell us a little bit more about it, what it means for the rest of the world? You go to countries, uh, for example, in Asia or Sub-Saharan Africa or even Latin America, um, you will find that WHO's words are gold dust. Um, they really are. Uh, it, it's such an important agency for setting technical guidance and uh, normative procedures and measures around health. So if WHO loses a fifth of its funding, that's going to mean a fifth of its funding doesn't go to its regional offices and it doesn't have a fifth of its funding for its work in Geneva. If it had to cut back on its work by 20%, that is a huge setback for health in some of the poorest and most vulnerable countries in the world. And we're not talking about just countries, we're talking about people. So this is why I described what President Trump has done as a crime against humanity, which seems at first a very exaggerated criticism. But it, the way I think of it is like this. WHO is there to protect the world's populations. A crime against humanity is defined as a knowing attack against a population. So by attacking WHO and cutting its funding by a fifth, that is an attack on the world's populations because WHO is there to defend those populations. So I really do believe that this is an attack on the people of the world and some of the most vulnerable people of the world. It's indefensible, it's appalling, and it needs to be resisted. And we, in the health professions, we as health workers, it's our responsibility to say that and it's our responsibility to defend an agency like WHO and defend the work it does, like its advocacy for primary health care and universal health coverage. And that puts us not just on the front lines of health care, but the front lines of politics. And it can be uncomfortable, but that's where we need to be. As a journal promoting the best of primary care and the primary care community, what, what can we do? Well, I think we can use our voice, both in terms of our institutions. Uh, across the United Kingdom, we're very fortunate in having an array of institutions, whether it's our Royal Colleges, our Academy of Medical Royal Colleges, uh, the British Medical Association, the Academy of Medical Sciences, the Royal Society. We have a whole panoply of medical and scientific bodies that if they could either individually or come together to make a clear statement defending WHO, defending primary health care and universal health coverage, that would be very, very important, I think, to show that we are a wall of resistance. And then, of course, those institutions arguing to our government that 
our government needs to also be very clear in its support. And I was very pleased to see that the government has made absolutely clear that it has no intention of withdrawing funding from WHO. Indeed, quite the contrary, it has asserted how important an agency like WHO is at this particular moment. So I think we actually have, we should be writing to our college presidents. Um, we should be individually tweeting, writing to our members of parliament, uh, doing all we possibly can to be advocates. Because, and this is where, this is why primary health care is so important. This pandemic is an issue of global health security. You cannot have global health security without having individual health security. And what is individual health security? It's a strong primary health care system. So primary health care is the absolute foundation for protecting ourselves against this pandemic and any future pandemic. It is in the first line of defence. Richard Horton, thank you very much for giving that very informed and passionate defence of primary care and where we need to go forward. Today I've been talking to Richard Horton, the editor of The Lancet, but in particular because of his interest in global health. Thank you very much, Richard. Thanks, and it's a pleasure to be with you.